Welcome. I'm Professor Maggie Livingston, and I'm the faculty director of the DePaul Center for Intellectual Property Law and Information Technology, better known by its acronym SIPLIT. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 15th Annual Intellectual Property Scholars Conference. Given that this is the conference's 15th anniversary, the plenary session this morning will speak to developments in IP scholarship and in the IPSC itself over the last 15 years. And the concluding plenary session tomorrow afternoon will forecast what we can expect in the future. The last 15 years have seen a raft of important U.S. Supreme Court cases in the IP area, including Dastar, KP Permanent Makeup, Eldred v. Ashcroft, Grokster, Kurtzang, KSR, eBay, Bilski, and Alice, just to name a few. In addition, Congress has been active in IP in the last 15 years, passing the American Events Act, and now contemplating a major overhaul of the Copyright Act and also a Federal Trade Secrets Act. Intellectual property continues to be a significant area for scholarly innovation, and the IP Scholars Conference has become an important venue for scholars to test out their ideas. I would like to acknowledge some key sponsors of the conference. Google and Microsoft both gave generous gifts in support of the conference, and we are extremely grateful for their support. Other sponsors include Professors Gregory Mark and John Roberts, the law firms of Neil Gerber and Eisenberg, and Swanson, Martin, and Bell, and a local attorney, Jeffrey S. Becker. The DePaul University College of Law Dean's Fund also provided essential support for the conference. I would like to thank all of our sponsors for their generosity. Finally, I would like to acknowledge our partners, Berkeley, Cardozo, and Stanford Law Schools, who have shared the hosting duties with us for many years. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the Dean of DePaul University College of Law, Jennifer Rosado Perea. Dean Rosado Perea joined DePaul on July 1st. We were able to lure her away from Northern Illinois College of Law, where she served as Dean for six years. She is an accomplished scholar and expert on family law, bioethics, legal ethics, and civil procedure. She received her BS from Cornell and her JD from the University of Pennsylvania. Please join me in welcoming Dean Rosada Perea. Thank you. Uh, good morning and welcome. I have been uh, a dean and administrator long enough to know I'm the last person you want to be hearing uh, before you start the conference, but I do think it's important uh, for me to be here and to share some gratitude, acknowledgments, and then uh, and then share with you a few a few thoughts uh, to leave you with and a call to action. So I'll try to do that all in, in three minutes. Um, overall, I want to thank SIPLIT uh, and the Center for all the work that it's been doing. Uh, and many of you are familiar uh, with SIPLIT and the work that it's done, I think, is a model for the integration of scholarship, of involving the legal community, especially uh, the lawyers, IP lawyers in Chicago, as well as our students in training the next generation of, of IP, uh, IP lawyers. And of, and of course, as you know, one of our, our clinic was one of the first in the country uh, to focus on IP law. Many of our talented faculty who built the center are here, Bobby Qual, the founding director, uh, Barbara Bressler, uh, who's our associate dean for experiential learning, Josh Sarnoff, Michael Grinberg, I think Patty Gerstenblith uh, will be joining us later, uh, and of course, our faculty director, uh, Maggie Livingston. There's also support instructionally and as well as in scholarship uh, from Tony Bellini. We do have a first year, actually, write, legal writing section in IP, as well as Stephanie Fusco, who adds as a fellow uh, scholarship and instructional support in the international area. Uh, you also know that uh, many of you have sponsored this and hosted this before, know that a lot of work, hundreds of hours, goes into preparing a conference like this. It hopefully will go off seamlessly and easily, and you'll just have a lot of fun and share a lot of ideas. Uh, but I want to particularly thank Ellen Gutientoff, who you probably is not here, but she'll be wearing many hats and running around throughout the conference and, and helping you. Please make sure you let her know if you have any questions um, throughout the conference. Uh, Brett ha Harrison Davinger has been doing a lot of, of the logistical support and informational support. Uh, Josh and Michael helped to choose uh, the papers as well as organize the presentations around themes. And Josh went above and beyond in helping with the fundraising uh, as well. And 
certainly last but not least, Maggie, our, our faculty director, uh, really worked very hard both on the organizing, the coordinating, uh, as well as on the fundraising. And as all of you know, that fundraising is becoming even, as, as all deans know, is even more important that our law schools can't, can't underwrite some of these. Uh, and Ellen's in the back. Uh, just, yeah. Say hi, so everybody knows. Uh, thank you very, very much. <laughs> thank you, Ellen. Um, and, uh, and, and know that, that, uh, that the coordination uh, is important in the fundraising as well because we all need additional sources to pull off these conferences. And Maggie, because she was going to have nothing to do after tomorrow, uh, I just appointed her as Associate Dean for Research and Faculty Development. So uh, she will be uh, continuing to be busy uh, after tomorrow afternoon. I'm, I'm very proud uh, as the new Dean of this law school uh, to be uh, introducing the 15th year of this IP Scholars conference. It is a model for scholars conferences across the country. As a health law scholar, I know that our conference every year is modeled after uh, some of the work that all of you have done. It started, uh, those of you who are who were not here 15 years ago, it started in 2001 with one sponsor, Cardozo, and nine presenters. Maggie gave me a two-page, you know, basically, you know, basically Xeroxed program, uh, and that's all there was. And today, there are are 100, over 170 presenters in areas that really are on the cutting edge of all aspects of IP theory, IP practice, interdisciplinary IP, empirical work, interdisciplinary work, and I'm so proud uh, for us to be hosting uh, this, uh, this generation of conference this, this year. Um, and I'm also heartened to see, it, as you know, as many of you know, that I do a lot of training of new law teachers. And the most, the thing that gives me most pride is to see a new generation of scholars and teachers in the academy, a new generation of scholars in IP. So the best thing for me is to see uh, the mentoring that will go on over the next two days of those of you, and I consider myself one of those senior faculty who will be mentoring, mentoring the junior faculty into excellence in, in the academy. One change that I've seen over the last 15 years, uh, not only have I seen, seen the great burgeoning in excellence in scholarship and in teaching, but, but on the negative side, and particularly in the last five years, is the attack on higher education and the attack on legal education, and particularly the attack on scholarship and the creation of knowledge. And you know, it's come from all fronts. I mean, I think we kind of brushed off Justice Roberts' comments a few years ago and thought, okay, that's fine. So he doesn't like it. We'll, you know, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. But the conversation and the attack has gotten a lot of traction from my perspective. Maybe you all don't see it from the trenches, but there is a frontal attack from legislators. There is a frontal attack from Supreme Courts and our practicing bar, and, the, and our practitioners, and our alumni. And, and for me, that is a scary thing, because I'm a great believer in the creation of knowledge. I'm a great believer in higher education and the value that it has intrinsically. Uh, but I guess what I would say to you is after this conference is over, after you work on the excellence of your own scholarship, that you join me as an advocate in the debate and embrace the debate that we need to go out to those constituencies and talk about the value of the work that we do. The value for its own sake, the value for teaching, the value for our students, the values for social change, the values for, for legal reform, and I think we have to take on that debate. It's, it's one that is rising, and I will be uh, a fellow soldier, and I will hopefully be a leader to help you all, to enable you to do the work that you do every day in such an excellent way. So have a wonderful conference. I will see you tonight at the dinner, and, uh, and just exchange great ideas. I'll see you later. Thank you, Dean Rosanna Perea. And now I would like to introduce the founding director of CIPLET and also the originator of the IP Scholars Conference 15 years ago, Bobby Qual, who is the Raymond P. Nairo Professor of Intellectual Property Law. Bobby is a leading scholar in the fields of copyright, property, and Jewish law, and has earned several awards for teaching, scholarship, and service. Her most recent book is entitled The Myth of the Cultural Jew, Culture and Law in Jewish Tradition, published this year by Oxford University Press. She is also the author, among many other works, 
of the Soul of Creativity, Forging a Moral Rights Law for the United States, published by Stanford University Press in 2010. Please join me in welcoming Professor Wall. Wow, 15 years, it's, it's just amazing. Um, so, um, first of all, I, I just want to add, I, I am so thrilled that, that uh, Dean Jen is, is our new dean. And by the way, another hat that Maggie wore this year was a member of the search committee that brought uh, Dean Correa to us. So another thank you um, for that as well. So we have a busy morning, and we're, we're just going to, um, to hop in. Before we uh, commence the opening plenary, um, we're going to take just a couple minutes and um, have two tributes to two of our colleagues um, that, that really sadly were taken from us, from our IP community, this year um, way too soon. So um, I would like to call upon, in succession, um, Professors Doris Long from John Marshall, who will do a, 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 a short tribute to Ben Liu, and to Professor Michael Carrier, um, who will do a short tribute to Greg Mastoka, and then we will commence with the plenary discussion after that. Good morning. <clears throat> I wanted to thank Bobby and the other organizers for a few minutes to be able to remember my colleague Ben Liu. It's hard to believe that he was only at John Marshall for four and a half years because he left such an incredible mark on the students, on the faculty, and even on the larger IT community. The last time I saw Ben, he was talking about a new research project. He had a smile on his face. He was thrilled about going to Japan and working on a comparative China-Japan study project. I'm still waiting for him to come back and tell me how that project went. Ben was passionate about three things. His family, including his wife Chelsea and his children, his students, and his scholarship. He had a piercing intellect that was matched only by a thirst for answers. No matter what project you were talking about, no matter what presentation you were doing, or what paper you were discussing, Ben would be sitting in the audience and he'd be doing two things smiling at you encouragingly and coming up with the really tough question that nailed your analysis to the wall and put you on the spot. He was a gifted teacher. He not only was brilliant at teaching, he gave of himself outside the classroom to encourage students to become kinder, gentler human beings because the one thing Ben loved was kind and generous. Um, he wasn't mean, he wasn't nasty, and he modeled that you didn't have to be. And a lot of them are coming up still to me and talking about ways where he shares experiences. He wasn't simply a China scholar. He was an Asia scholar who to spoke both Mandarin and Japanese. But I would like to take him a very short amount of time. I don't want to mourn his passing. I want to celebrate his life. Um, because for the short time we had him, it was amazingly rich. We were fortunate to know him as a friend, a colleague, a scholar. I want to celebrate his smile. I want to celebrate his ready humor. I want to celebrate the fact that his writings will live on so that other people will know him through the work that he was most passionate about. And finally, I want to celebrate the fact that in the very short time that we had him among us, we were privileged to be able to experience his generosity, his wit, and his wisdom. Despite the brevity of the time he shared with us, he left his mark. He will be remembered, deservedly so. Thank you. I want to thank Bobby and the organizers for the chance to say something about Greg. For starters, Greg would not be comfortable with me standing here talking about him. <laughs> I've never seen someone who was so accomplished but so unbelie unbelievably modest about all that he had done. And it was not the fake modesty that so many of us have, where we really do want you to top about him. <laughs> we do want you to talk about us, but, we, <laughs> but, but we'll say that we, we don't. He, he really was, and so I asked him towards the end, you know, we'd like to do something for you. And he was so uncomfortable, sort of like he was kicked in the gut. Like, Mike, why would anyone want to talk about me? And, and so, in the end, I might have convinced him to talk now, because I think I could convince him that there are two things about IPSC that Greg really stood for. The first was just 
the breadth of his interests and writing. With the exception of someone whose last name is not Lemley, Mark Greg covered more areas of IP than anyone I've ever seen. Copyright, trademark, right of publicity, very comfortable in all of those, and then venturing far outside those fields to be a real star in the era of video games, to literally write the book about virtual worlds, to be on the front lines of cyber property before it was cyber property, actually litigating the Hamidi case against Intel. And so as we sit here for the next couple days, uh, either the hundreds or thousands of presentations in front of us, it's worth keeping in mind what a broad coverage Greg had. And the second and more important is that Greg embodied the spirit of IPSC, the spirit of reading papers and giving feedback and crafting careers and crafting lives. Greg loved it, and it was just a part of who he was. He was unbelievably nice and caring and wanted to give you feedback on your papers and keep talking about them and craft your careers and see what made sense for the future. So at the end of the day, I think that Greg still would not be entirely comfortable with me standing here, but because he symbolized so much of what made IPSC special, I thought maybe I'd say a few words. Thank you.